let's go ahead and get started. Um, maybe this is a good time to deploy the poll, uh, Raymond. So I have a poll just to understand who is here with us today so that I can try to focus the discussion accordingly. So I'll give you guys um, about 30 seconds or so just to answer that really quick uh, and to help direct the rest of this conversation. Um, I guess I, I myself will not answer it, but when we think we have uh, most of the people responding. Um, We're up to 10 of 17 who have responded. Yeah, if you haven't answered it, please uh, jump right in. Um, if I failed to account for your particular situation, I do apologize. Tried my best. Um, you could also choose the choice that's just closest uh, to, to what represents you. Okay, we're up to 15 of 17. I'll close the poll in 10 seconds. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, closing the poll now. And sharing the results. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so it looks like we have quite a range um, of uh, different experiences here today. So I, I will try my best to give examples that will work um, for all of these scenarios. And uh, if, if I fail to, if you don't feel that I'm addressing uh, your particular situation, you know, um, feel free to pop questions in the chat. Um, I'll also give uh, an opportunity to ask questions uh, in the middle of the discussion so you can, you know, um, unmute and ask your questions then too. Okay, so this gives me a good idea of where to go. Um, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> what is impact? So I I asked this question to so many people when I was applying for uh, my jobs um, and even while I was in my jobs, trying to understand uh, what it is that people wanted to see on resumes or on LinkedIn um, in my portfolio and uh, like what I should be putting in my research presentations um, to convey impact. And the, the sort of simple one-line answer is impact is something that changed because you exist. Um, any way that you've managed to move the needle. So it doesn't have to be um, increasing sales by a certain percentage or uh, reaching a certain number of people or getting, you know, um, 2,000 users through your product. Uh, it can actually manifest in small ways too. So we'll definitely go through examples of how, what that might look like um, in like administrative work because I, I feel like just about every job uh, in, involves some degree of ad administrative tasks. Um, and we'll also uh, look at some like academic examples as well. All right. Why is framing impact important? Well, um, it is one of the things that we are able to control for ourselves during the job hunting process. Uh, those of you guys who were in the last session with our recruiter, uh, Floy, um, probably uh, were surprised, just like I was, to find that some of the recruiting process is actually quite superficial. Um, Floy talked about things like connecting um, job candidates to hiring managers because they happen to go to the same university or they like, uh, they're from the same city. Um, or like the same sports team. So it could be something as, as random as that, uh, determining whether you get your next job, uh, not the accomplishments um, actually on your resume. Um, in fact, the uh, hiring manager that she connected me to um, and which led to the job that I currently hold now, uh, that manager happens to have the same degree that I do. Uh, and that made it easier for me to interview with that person because um, we already understood each other. I didn't have to do a lot of translation. But um, when you consider that uh, recruiters might be kind of like taking shortcuts like this, uh, it, it makes you wonder, well, like, um, how, how can I like can help control this narrative? How can I make sure that they're seeing all the things, the different ways uh, that they can connect me to a different person? Um, and so kind of like presenting yourself well um, online on your LinkedIn profile, on your resume uh, is a factor in that. Um, I guess, and, and 
I think another thing to highlight here is just that Ploy is a good recruiter. So imagine all the other recruiters out there who um, are just trying to fill their quota or it's just uh, a way for them to pay their bills. So they, they just show up to work, um, try to like find some people and throw them uh, at a particular role and just hope for the best. Uh, so if, if Ploy is doing things like, um, you know, just looking at very visual or superficial aspects of somebody's portfolio or like uh, how they've, you know, presented themselves on LinkedIn, like whether the profile photo is professional, uh, whether there's something filled in in the account summary, um, all of those things are, are just like that much more important uh, because some someone may not dive as deep uh, into your portfolio or your resume um, to, to try to puzzle out uh, what you're trying to say if you don't already give it to them directly. So basically this helps recruiters and hiring teams uh, see your potential, um, make it really easy for them. Uh, don't, don't make them be the ones to make that leap and try to see uh, what impact you had. Um, and because uh, we often use a lot of jargon in our line of work, no matter what it is, but especially in academia that uh, recruiters or people who are working in maybe like a business context may not understand, um, like translating the impact uh, in a way that's understandable uh, is really going to help uh, cement the understanding of a line on your CV or a line on your resume that much faster so that they don't have to work to try to figure it out. Um, it also makes you feel more uh, confident in interviews because you know what you've actually managed to accomplish. Um, and then uh, they're just things that you can point to when you're trying to get a pay increase um, or get yourself leveled uh, in a certain role. Um, and therefore this influences also your negotiations for compensation. So um, very quickly, ways to talk about impact. I focus on three different ways. Uh, most of us start out by making a resume that's like very focused on what duties we've done. So it could be like very literally just listing, um, you know, made copies or uh, filed things um, in the university's filing uh, like system or completed forms for um, IRB uh, approvals. Um, and while these were all important to uh, completing the job role that you were hired for, um, it doesn't kind of, it doesn't really take what you did far enough uh, for people to understand like what was accomplished by doing those duties. Um, now you may have seen the most common way to show impact uh, on a resume is to add numbers. And so people will say like, find any way you can to quantify what you've done. Um, for example, like if you happen to be conducting research, uh, maybe you conduct research by interviewing participants. Um, instead of just saying that your duty was interviewed participants, you might say something like interviewed 300 uh, participants. And uh, that already shows that you have quite a lot of experience. Um, 300 uh, interviews gives you like a lot more, um, I guess, ability to know like uh, how to address unexpected occurrences, um, um, to find like your particular process of doing things that keeps uh, research smooth. Um, it's also a way to let people, I guess, compare how much uh, you've done versus maybe somebody who could be more junior or less experienced. Um, so if you are someone who has uh, presented at um, 10, conference, uh, 10 conferences, uh, this is going to show that you have ability to um, like convey yourself verbally well uh, and maybe like reach a broad audience because you've done it at a conference rather than um, maybe to just a classroom. Um, and then I think it's just a, kind of like something that people are able to hang uh, a decision on, like just knowing um, how much of it you've done, how uh, for how long, uh, how many people it affected. Um, and so this is 
an easy way to show impact if you have access to those numbers. Um, I will just show an example here. So um, instead of a very duty focused uh, resume line, which is like reported on committee activities every quarter, uh, this is an actual role uh, that I've held in the past. Um, and one of my responsibilities was to produce um, like a quarterly new newsletter for uh, the entire organization so that they know what we accomplished, um, but then also like share information about what was um, available and like give people ideas for um, opportunities that they could apply for or seek out. Um, so if you were to add numbers to this uh, to make it more impressive, um, I don't think saying writing four reports in a year sounds very impressive. So I went for the audience number. Um, our organization had approximately um, 10,000 members. About half of those, I think, were grad students and some of them were faculty members, but it totaled to approximately 10,000 members. And so I changed it to um, a report for a professional audience of 10,000 members, showing that that was the potential reach. Did all of those 10,000 members read the report? Did they even open it? Uh, it was an emailed newsletter. Probably not. Um, but it was intended for this scope uh, of people and had that potential impact. Um, so I, I feel confident, uh, confident like putting this on my resume as well. Um, another way that you can extend your uh, discussion of impact on a resume is to go a little bit further uh, with what the effect was. So. Um, I'm borrowing this analogy from Ploy. She was talking about presenting your research in a way that's understandable to a five-year-old, and she meant uh, to simplify it so that there wasn't a lot of jargon um, and that uh, somebody who's a lay person can still understand what you did because, for example, recruiters are not researchers, so they don't um, they, they may not understand uh, the details of like analysis, uh, different methods that you use. They don't, um, they can't appreciate uh, those subtleties necessarily. But um, to some extent that applies to your resume um, or your case studies as well. Uh, what I am thinking of here though, uh, explaining to a five-year-old is more like when, when you talk to somebody who is younger, uh, they understand, say, cause and effect. So in this situation, when you've done a job, you are the cause of something, but uh, you just want to tell them, like, what, what is the effect? Um, as an example, let's say uh, you might have a duty on your resume that's something like um, instructed, 1,000 uh, students every semester um, on for three different courses. Um, that's like using the numerical method. But you want to take it a little bit further uh, because a, a five-year-old, like they might understand the concept of school um, and learning something and that there are, could be different subjects. But uh, what, what does that exactly mean? And so if you were to take it a little bit further and just say, um, like really simplify it, taught students, mm, let's see, I'm gonna pick a topic, how people interact with each other in a course that lasted for a year. And maybe that's you breaking down um, social psychology or um, let's see, I'm trying to pick something else that uh, somebody in, who's an academic might, might have done. Or let's see, let's do a non-academic example. Um, hmm. I once worked in a development office as an intern. Um, I was responsible for inputting addresses correctly so that we could mail uh, donor requests uh, to people who are potential donors. That's going to mean nothing to a five-year-old, for example. But I could say um, helped an office uh, reach reach out to people who might donate money 
so that there would be money for um, a program to work on their initiatives and like mention like specific uh, specific initiatives that they wanted to to have like um, help the office get enough money to build a auditorium um, for all of the students. That's something that is a little bit more understandable to a five-year-old. And of course, you don't have to use the exact language that you would use uh, for a child because your resume is, is for adults. Um, but just really break down like uh, what that specific like effect or goal was um, instead of kind of like leaving it up to people's imaginations. So like, instead of saying, um, you know, created a spreadsheet to send uh, donor requests to donors, um, it, it would be something more like the actual, uh, I think, end result that you wanted, uh, which was uh, assisted in the acquisition of funds for um, a, $1.5 billion auditorium uh, that benefited the whole school, something like that. Um, and to use the same uh, ex uh, example that I had before on reported on committee activities every quarter, uh, I took it a little bit further. Um, it wasn't just reporting on activities, but rather informing colleagues uh, of resources for professional development via regular newsletters. Um, and then we can take this even further. Uh, I believe that expected impact is just as important as impact that has already um, occurred. So you can just like look at the task that was done and sort of uh, extrapolate to what you're expecting to happen. Um, and so this result uh, would be something like guided colleagues to funding sources, publication and networking opportunities, uh, potential jobs, and other resources for professional development by writing regular newsletters. So I've still included the task here at the end. Um, and I kind of favor this myself, uh, putting the impact in the, in the front, like what the end result uh, was or was expected to be. And then saying like how exactly I did that uh, towards the end, but you can also reverse the order um, and have the duty first and then the impact uh, at the end. Um, and if you have, if you've taken a look at my LinkedIn to see how I talk about impact, you'll see that I use a whole variety of these. I have some that are very simply just the duty, but with a little bit more detail. Um, I have some where uh, I, I just added numbers to the duty. Um, I have some where I just really spelled out exactly what the effect was. Um, and then some where it's more of a expected impact. Um, and it's okay to write uh, expected impact if maybe you completed a project that is so new that you don't know uh, the effect yet. Um, or if it's just a, an initiative that's gonna take time to really see what the ultimate effect is gonna be. Um, as an example, uh, my previous uh, position at TikTok, um, I, knew that the things that I did were pretty foundational to the organization um, because in some cases it was the first time any research had been conducted on that particular thing for them. Um, but of course it does take time to see uh, effects, uh, especially on things that are foundational, like maybe like uh, privacy or like um, loss of trust uh, or like older generations uh, adopting new media. So. I just continued following um, TikTok in the news and also on LinkedIn and anything that was published uh, by their official sources, um, if it was related to something that I worked on, um, I saw that as, uh, as kind of like an, imp an uh, impact that I helped create. So I was comfortable also adding those to my resume as well. Even though uh, I was not the direct person, they're saying, okay, you've got to do this based on this particular report here. Um, I know that some of my uh, research like bubbled up through my manager and then uh, up to the higher levels uh, to eventually become um, different initiatives that now exist. So that's something I guess I would encourage for um, any, any roles that you've held where 
you did something that's still pretty new, um, just keep following it. Um, if you are still in touch with people who are at that role, um, or if you can look up information about how it's progressing uh, online. For example, if you participate, um, not you participated, but you worked on uh, some research that um, maybe isn't uh, one that you owned end, for, end to end, you can kind of follow uh, the publications that are coming out of it uh, to see um, that one that it's being published um, and then where the that goes from there like if there are any interventions based on it um, if not that's fine it still resulted in sharing of knowledge which is still impact uh, and and then just continue updating uh, your resume as you find out uh, about like I guess the um, you know the butterfly effect of things that you've worked on so uh, let's try it I did get a lot of submissions from you guys um, some of them were a little bit more complex, so I feel like maybe we don't have enough time to walk through those. Uh, but let's try to do a few right now, um, all together. Let's see. So um, this one is somewhat duty focused. Uh, it is specific, which I really liked. It mentions um, the specific, like uh, I guess, software package and um, coding ability that was used. Um, and this is great because it'll show up in uh, like recruiter searches or like um, if an ATS is processing your resume looking for certain keywords, um, those will pop up uh, as a match for a job potentially. So it's great that this person was already quite specific. Um, and so I need your help now. Uh, what would you guys do with this? What are some ways we can make this one even better? And feel free to either drop it in the chat if you're more comfortable writing it out, or if you like, uh, feel free to unmute and talk to me. <laughs> what are some ways we can make this? I better? wanted to know, like, the, what did the findings generate or produce? So, what was the impact of this work? Okay. So that would be one way to improve it. Um, I guess we, I don't know if that per, the person who submitted this is on this call. So we can, um, if somebody would like to take a stab at cre uh, creating the impact, um, make up some findings for this example. Please don't make up findings for your actual resume, but for the sake of this exercise, uh, just dream something up. And any other suggestions or ways this can be improved? So I think I see some things popping into the chat. Let's have a look. Um, how many participants, how much data uh, was analyzed? Great, those are good questions. Um, because this could be, let's see. I mean, for something that was analyzed in SPSS and Python, it, it, could, be, it could have been um, anywhere from like a hundred to thousands. Uh, perhaps this was big data. Um, and some companies are looking for people who have experience with large data sets. So if you have experience like that, it's a great thing to highlight. So let's see what other things people have written here. Number of data points, 10,000 survey responses, which resulted in X insights, great. So again, taking it a little further and finding what the, the actual result was, uh, that's definitely helpful. And if, if you're not able to talk about a specific result because of NDA, um, try to frame it in uh, just kind of like broad terms, like results that would influence blah, blah, blah kind of decision. Uh, let's see what else we have here, what type of analysis. Um, so maybe not too specific, but whether it was uh, significance testing, correlations, sometimes uh, having those keywords um, are great uh, because again, they can pop up either for an ATS, uh, scanning, or maybe the research, um, sorry, the recruiter is like control F, like actually looking for it on your resume um, or LinkedIn as uh, Ploy mentioned that she does. Um, and I definitely see job ads that say, these are the type of analyses this person needs to be able to do. So if you actually include uh, the type of analyses that were conducted, um, that would be another match for the job ad. Uh, who were then uh, findings informing, definitely helpful. Maybe these were findings that uh, were gonna go to a higher level. Uh, maybe you worked on a grant, so you're informing um, 
national institutes. Uh, maybe it's something that you're doing for like program evaluation. Um, so it's going to in inform like the leadership of the whole university. Uh, you know, you can spin it in different ways. Maybe how the analyses were used to make changes or what type of problem it was to address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely uh, if, if there was like a real world impact, uh, those are things that you really want to highlight. Uh, sometimes the research that is done in academia it does not have that sort of real world impact, but um, the other ways that people have mentioned here <laughs> have uh, are really helpful too. Like, you know, who it was targeted at, did it go up to higher levels? Um, did it, even if it didn't result in like an intervention or a change, um, it provided information that uh, will, will likely inform something later on, you know? Uh, maybe they decide not to do something because everything seems to be okay, or they realize that there's a gap in the experience and they will have to address this in the future. So it could lead to future research even. Um, let's see. Okay, had insights led to exchanges, guided product decision-making. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And all right, these are some great suggestions. So I'm hoping that uh, that was a, an example where you can see that it was already um, pretty specific. It, it wasn't a bad uh, line on for a CV or a resume at all, but it can definitely go even further. Uh, let's try another example. I think I included, let's see, yes, this one. Um, prepared and presented information for various audiences. So ranging from the X board of higher ed to lay audiences, uh, what's a way that we can improve this one? And again, if you feel comfortable speaking up, feel free to come off of mute, or if you want to uh, pop something in the chat, you can definitely do that as well. Okay, I think we have somebody, let's see, number of people in the audience. Mm -hmm. It could be very helpful, for example, if you um, are in the habit of uh, giving large talks, you know, just estimate. You don't have to be exactly correct in your estimation. Um, let's see, what other ways might I do it? And sometimes, um, sometimes it helps uh, just to work on, on the verb choice, too. Um, like you could say educated instead of prepared and presented information. Um, you could say designed. Mm -hmm. There's always a like wordsmith it, I suppose, but uh, designed a course sequence for lay audiences on and then go into the specific topic of uh, what it is, not just research methods, but um, how to conduct unbiased survey research. Uh, okay, and Sarah has some great advice here. Storytelling is a big word in UX research, made insights relatable or provided actionable insights with concise recommendations, absolutely. Uh, it's probably one of the, the critiques that I tend to see a lot um, in industry about uh, academics that sometimes uh, we're very long-winded. <laughs> um, and if we can find a way to like cut through all that noise and just uh, crisply can convey information, then um, that's already something that is highly needed in industry. Uh, but also you can present yourself way that uh, well that way too. Um, I think I think the fact that the person ha this person has already highlighted that it's a range of various uh, audiences is helpful for people to know. Um, I might use some keywords that you often see in job ads, like uh, uh, verbal communication or written communication. Um, I, it's actually not clear from this one whether this was presented verbally or um, written, but if this person has uh, both of those abilities, I would highlight those keywords again, um, because people are looking for them either on the resume on LinkedIn or uh, the ATS is scanning for those keywords. Um, and let's see. 
we have some suggestions here. What could the audience do with the information? Again, uh, that's great. It's taking a little bit further, uh, either looking it into the, looking into the future or um, you know explaining this to a five year old. Like what what is the potential effect of this information? Um, we have specifying the types of audiences. This could be uh, really helpful to, again, um, tailoring it to the particular job description. So if you are applying for sort of like a director role and you know that you'll be communicating to like the C-suite, um, other directors, then showing that you have that uh, experience doing that type of upper level communication and managing upwards uh, is great. If you are maybe applying for a role where um, you're going to be influencing your product team, perhaps, or just uh, people who may not understand research, they're not researchers themselves, then um, showing that you can communicate to, to lay people or people who are non-experts uh, is something important to highlight in the line itself. And keep in mind that you, you would likely have different versions of your resume depending on what jobs uh, you apply to. Um, so this is where that tailoring comes in that uh, you have this particular task that you did or this particular duty that you did, um, but depending on the role that you're applying for, you might want to shape it just a little bit different to show that you have that exact experience that um, that particular job role is wanting. Okay, okay, interested to know the topic of the presentation, and this may be many different um, topics. So some examples uh, would kind of make it a little bit more juicy. Um, if the person has presented on a wide range of topics that are uh, relevant to that particular industry, even if they're not in, uh, relevant to the industry, um, you know, don't despair, like, just uh, getting getting a few more details, I think, into the line. Um, kind of creates more interest uh, and, and is potentially, again, something that could be searchable by recruiters. Um, like if they're just looking for an expert who's on, somebody who's an expert on a particular topic, or um, again, could be something that uh, like sparks the connection to the hiring manager that they decide to connect you to. Maybe that hiring manager happens to specialize um, in a particular topic too, or cares about um, a particular initiative just like you do. Um, yes, let's see, something like if the topic relates to saving time or money, people would be interested. Absolutely. Things about efficiency, um, saving time, saving money, uh, preventing problems. Uh, these would all be great ways, I think, to, to show impact. Okay, uh, I see that we're running out of time, so <laughs> let me move forward. Um, I just realized that all of the ones that are submitted are academic. So I do apologize for that, but I do have some slides in the future that talk more about non-academic um, job duties as well. So this one, um, let's let's just try. Uh, we'll do this one really quick. Design and implement curricula that increases students' critical thinking skills and their understanding of research, uh, the rhetorical situation, and persuasive writing. So I like that this one's already very specific, uh, but what are some ways that maybe we can make it better? And again, feel free to pop into the chat or um, come off of me and speak up. I think that this person has also um, already taken some care with uh, the word choice, which is lovely. Um, saying design and implement, these are like really strong active verbs to use. Um, I might remove some words that feel a little jargony to me, such as curricula. Uh, what might I replace that with? Hmm. Maybe, maybe strategies, education. Um, or, or even something like taught down opportunities that in, to increase students' uh, critical thinking skills. I mean, there, there really isn't anything um, that I, I would critique about design and implement. I just feel that if you were trying to escape um, that perception of being, quote unquote, too academic, uh, this might be something to, to put more into a five-year-old's term, the lay, a lay, a lay person's sort of terms. Um, 
And I, I guess maybe I, I, I might change the rhetorical situation to something else. I, I might either put it in different words uh, or I might remove it completely, just kind of depending on what, what else um, is listed on your resume. If, uh, if you feel that you've done similar tasks in different roles, um, you know, they don't all have to sound the same, like highlight different uh, accomplishments um, in that role too. Okay, so let's see, I think we have some suggestions. Um, hmm, okay, number of students served, definitely very helpful. Um, for many of the people who have been teaching for a while, you've likely now uh, had thousands of students. So that's also quite impressive. Um, and by the way, I just want to say after after running this workshop series, I am in full admiration of all of you guys who teach like multiple times a week uh, for many years, preparing multiple <laughs> um, lessons uh, for each week. Uh, it's not an easy job. So you guys really deserve all the accolades that you receive and uh, and then some. Okay, so what type of students? Uh, this is a great question. Um, from this particular sentence, we, we actually can't tell. Um, are they traditional college students? Are these maybe a, a adult students, non-traditional students, international students? Um, all, all of which kind of like require different tailoring. Uh, to, to either their learning abilities, if, if they're international students, maybe you try to make different connections than you would for um, somebody who, uh, who who's kind of grown up in the same academic environment as you. Um, so, so these are all ways that somebody might adapt uh, when they're conducting research. Like if you're conducting um, research in international markets with either a translator or uh, with people who are from different cultures, you would again adjust your approach. Um, compared to how you might approach somebody who um, is in the US or Canada, if that's where you're from. So showing those different abilities is really helpful. Uh, and definitely the level of the students as well, um, because I think we have a range of people here. So if you are working with um, primary school students or sorry, like preschool students, uh, that's a very different like, skill set than um, high school or university level or grad students. Okay, so let's move forward. I am kind of concerned now that I won't be able to cover everything. Uh, whoops, let's go back. What does impact look like? Um, resumes don't need to be comprehensive um, and you really don't need to list every single duty that you've had at a particular job. Just instead look for ways that you have, again, like influenced or changed things. Uh, and there's a chance that impact is not what you spend most of your time on. So I've listed some examples here. Uh, I guess instead of going through each one individually, um, I will be making this deck available uh, afterwards. So you guys can take a, a more detailed look at it yourself. Um, but I've given, let's see, I'm just looking through to see if there's anything that I want to call out. Uh, any way that you've like improved a process, um, maybe noticed either that something was failing or, um, that it could just go more smoothly. Uh, maybe you noticed that an application had, um, two questions that were very similar, but people were still having to answer both of them. And then you removed uh, one of them so that it became like a shorter form and more efficient. Um, or let's see, you shared knowledge uh, that you generated um, so that other people could benefit from it without having to go through the, the whole experience themselves. I can talk a little bit about that later. Um, yeah, I think that some of these I can give an example of in a moment. Some academic examples. Uh, maybe you inspired undergrads to go into the same field as you. Uh, maybe they changed their major. Um, to me, that's a kind of impact. Or you communicated um, 
difficult ideas to different audiences on the fly, which is <laughs> quite difficult. You're just having to come up with examples um, without having a chance to think about them before. Uh, let's see. And you can kind of see where some of those techniques that I suggested earlier are kind of fitting in, like looking to the future. You're training and mentoring um, future scientists, future sociologists, future geographers, historians, professors, etc. Um, and then uh, awards are definitely um, something that I think look good regardless of uh, what what field you get them in. And then just kind of tell like what exactly was uh, the award for, not just the name of it. Um, if you got people to buy into uh, something that you do by um, successfully submitting grant applications, like tell them what you were funded for specifically, not just the dollar amount of your grant, grant but um, what was it for? What were you intended to do? Um, same for completed research that blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think that even in academia where uh, our conference presentations, our journal articles and our books uh, may not get read by a wide audience. Uh, this, this, is a, this is like an example of you taking a project from start to finish, uh, something that may be very arduous um, from end to end. Uh, and that in itself uh, is something that is impactful and that people like to see on a resume that uh, you can get a job done. You're not just um, starting things only to not finish them. Um, definitely in academia, people also collaborate with cross-functional roles to achieve a goal. Uh, for example, you have likely interacted with um, people up in the IRB, uh, people who deal with awards and uh, like grants and funding, um, people who are not uh, researchers, but having to convince them of the value of something that you want to do, um, working with um, ad administration or administrative staff to achieve a particular goal of yours. Uh, so, you know, just because you didn't work with um, designers or uh, engineers or product managers doesn't mean uh, you don't have that ability to um, talk to somebody who's from a different path in life or a different background and convey what it is uh, that you do and how you can help them uh, and then work together to achieve. Um, that final goal. So, uh, we have time for this. There was a time, <laughs> um, and I don't know if you guys will believe me, but I managed to increase efficiency uh, in my undergrad advising office um, in the about half hour or so it took for me to wait for an advising appointment. Um, Again, this was obviously not one of my duties as a student. Uh, I was just sitting in the office waiting for my appointment and I happened to observe a number of scenarios um, where other students came into the office and they asked um, the administrative assistant, what forms do I need to do blah, blah, blah. What, new, what forms do I need to add this class? What forms do I need to file for graduation? Um, what forms do I need to change my address? And uh, without fail, every time the administrative assistant would say, oh, yes, uh, you need forms, um, this one, this one, this one, uh, and you should go grab the form that is the third from the bottom of the third column, and then like the third one from um, the right on the third row, and then the top uh, two forms in the right corner. And there would be like, two or three forms that everybody would need for whatever task uh, it is that they wanted to complete. Um, and they were getting just a long list of confusing instructions from the uh, administrative assistant who had been doing it this way for I think about 15 or 20 years. Um, and she had to repeat herself multiple times because even though she knew where all those forms were, uh, the way she was reeling off the instructions um, was very difficult for the students to follow. So I told uh, one of the advisors after my appointment, by the way, uh, if this panel of 32 different forms was, was labeled in some way, um, the administrative assistant can just tell the people who come in what numbers they need to get 
and they can look for the numbers um, and just pull those papers instead of her repeating herself ad nauseum and the students getting flustered uh, and getting the wrong forms and having to come back. Um, this happened about 20 years ago, and to my knowledge, my department is still using uh, the numbers that they've now added. They keep refreshing the numbers every time they get kind of faded, but um, it was a kind of impact. <laughs> and not something, again, that was a duty of mine. It was just something that I noticed uh, while sitting idly and uh, was able to make a difference. Sped up everybody's um, process getting in and out of that office, and hopefully uh, <laughs> kept the administrative assistant um, happier in her job and not uh, getting increasingly frustrated as she thought uh, none of the students knew where to get the forms. Okay, so how to find your impact. Um, definitely move past your specific job duties. Uh, and sometimes impact does come from one small thing that you did. So we have, I think, some examples here. Look for ways that you've solved problems. They can be big ones, they can be small ones, or even prevented a problem from occurring. Uh, if you've been able to improve a process or a policy, no matter the level, so it could be something within your team, uh, it could be something at the department level, um, something at the university level, uh, or to going out of the academic context, it could be um, something on your team or org at work or, or the entire business. Uh, just think of ways that you've done that. Uh, you could have changed a specific person's life uh, with an, an, a particular idea that you developed. Um, you could uh, also, with work that you've done, um, helped push your team or decision makers in a particular direction or told them, hey, this doesn't look uh, like a good uh, avenue to pursue, pursue, like maybe we should avoid this particular one. Um, so these are all ways uh, to have impact that aren't necessarily quantifiable, but do um, still have meaning. Um, share your knowledge with others. So if maybe you've compiled resources for people, uh, and that's a, a way that they can um, now access uh, recommended works without um, having to go through a search themselves um, and they, they can educate themselves that way and like move forward from there. Uh, if you've helped save money or time or improve outcomes, um, identified gaps in an experience and then uh, maybe proposed a solution for that, uh, that's definitely impact. If you've been able to start an initiative or process um, or get some buy-in on like using a new tool or um, a new vendor, uh, maybe, um, maybe your university didn't have a online participant system before and uh, you got them to start using one by suggesting a few uh, alternatives and the you know um, pros and cons of each. Uh, maybe you were recognized by others and then um, like someone just came up to you and said hey you did really well in blah 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 uh, and it wasn't like a formal award that you received but that got you thinking like hmm uh that is something that that i did uh that was apparently helpful to someone uh, and just kind of like taking into account like feedback that you've received uh, about something that you've done like pointing out that uh, you made an impact for them um, let's see. So you're definitely going to come across people who will discount your accomplishments, um, especially uh, that there are unfortunately people in um, business or like in the tech industry who might say, well, um, your experience is not the type that we want, and yet you have like 15 or 20 years of experience. So I just uh, take the position of uh, you not being the one who discounts your accomplishments. Um, definitely you might feel uh, imposter syndrome. I still feel that every day, but I try not to be the one to say like, well, I, I guess it's not very good or um, this might not be what you're looking for, but just really saying, well, this is, this is what I've done and um, you make of it what you will. Uh, because I know that I did accomplish something. Maybe it's not a, a direct match to what they were thinking, but if you can help them see the potential, um, then you already have something to be proud of. 
Okay, how to create impact. <laughs> the, I, the time that uh, I had an idea and it failed. Um, I, do we have time for this? Oh gosh, we do not. Um, there was a, an initiative I tried to start at work. Um, we conducted research to decide how it would be, uh, how uh, we wrote a proposal for it and got buy-in from the, the levels that were above us, like the director levels. Uh, and we actually launched the initiative. But unfortunately, due to a number of factors, it didn't really take off. Um, the two people I was working with, um, one of them had to go on a long leave of absence and the other one uh, moved off the team. So we could no longer uh, like execute it together. And then also at the same time, um, we onboarded a bunch of new people and started new initiatives for them. So it kind of like uh, superseded uh, the particular initiative that I had created. But even so, um, we did go through all the time and effort to uh, survey people to find out what they wanted, um, to actually propose the initiative uh, and then develop how it would look. Uh, so it, it still became a line on my resume, designed a peer feedback initiative for fellow UXRs and revamped it based on iterative feedback. Um, I wasn't able to take it farther and say like where it would have gone since we ended the initiative, but uh, this was intended to have uh, a form of impact um, and could have been very impactful. So I think that it shows potential for things that I could do in the future. And I feel comfortable including it on my resume. Let's see something in chat. Oh, this is great, Sarah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you can share lessons learned and number of lessons learned. Uh, there's always learning. Absolutely. Uh, I, I definitely think that um, my failed uh, example uh, kind of showed me um, wh where we would have needed to go to make it more successful. I, I know what I would do if I had to redo this initiative. Uh, and so I can hopefully do something like this in the future uh, somewhere else or just taking advantage of a different time. Um, I'm not gonna talk about this, <laughs> but the sh long story short, I had to figure out um, how to randomize conditions on Qualtrics for my dissertation. Um, I happened to be the first person in my department who was doing it. So did I come up with something creative and um, groundbreaking? No, I didn't. I just called Qualtrics support, found out how to do it, uh, wrote the program, printed it out, <laughs> um, labeled it, and then I made copies of it and just shared it with people in my lab, which were then you know passed on to people in other labs uh, and then to the rest of the department. So it was a way that I helped um, basically save time for everybody by sharing knowledge that I had already acquired. Uh, and this ultimately became also a line on my resume. Uh, there was other stuff that factored into it, but pioneered the use of online survey tools, et cetera, uh, for one laboratory and subsequently the Department of Psychology. I wasn't, I wasn't even the person who suggested uh, the original use of the online survey tools. That was somebody else in my lab, but I leaned into it really hard. I did research in all the other uh, online survey tools that were available um, and presented it to my, uh, my thesis advisor, um, showed people other ways that it could be used because I happened to know um, HTML back in, back, in the time, back in the day and uh, basically improved everybody's use of it. Uh, and then it became a bigger and bigger thing in my department until uh, we eventually decided to buy into Qualtrics, which is much more expensive, um, and then adopted for the entire uh, department. So I was not the first, but I helped, I was one of the first and helped lead it. Uh, so ideas are great. That is, that is a form of impact and following through with ideas and a, an even greater way to have impact as well. So you can be either, you can be the, the first one to do something and then kind of like show everybody else the way, or you can be one of the ones to latch onto it and then take it even further. All right, um, does anybody want to do breakout rooms? Because we don't really have the time left for that, but I'm open to doing it if somebody wants to uh, workshop their, um, the lines on their CV. Or resume or their portfolio. It's up to you guys. Raymond, how are you feeling? Do you, do you have to go? <laughs> oh, no, I don't have to go. I'm thrilled to facilitate whatever people would like to do.
Okay. It, would anyone uh, still want to stay around? Let's see. Well, whoever wants to stay, um, we'll just take a few minutes to to workshop one of your lines since I, we, I wasn't able to get to all the examples that were submitted. I had intended to also talk about uh, resume tools like JobScan or Jobalytics or um, <laughs> the, the new coming of AI. So how, how AI is uh, potentially helpful in working on resumes now, either for um, just editing an existing resume or for generating uh, your resume completely. But we definitely don't have time for that. So what I'm going to do is uh, just write out some of what I was going to say, and then it'll just be included in the deck that I'll share with everyone. So thank you all for uh, taking the extra time to to uh, work on your resumes in the breakout room. I heard some um, heard some great discussions happening. Uh, I encourage you guys to uh, use this opportunity to network e with each other from the uh, networking spreadsheet. Um, you know, sometimes we just need like an excuse to network. So your excuse is me saying, hey, please go out and just reach out to, you know, two or three people or all the people on the spreadsheet and um, build up your network because we are real. We really are stronger together. You never know what uh, opportunities you can get from your network as well as who you can help um, just by connecting to some people. And uh, who knows, it may turn into another line of impact <laughs> on your uh, on your resume. Um, there is a session evaluation and final evaluation that is included in one link that Raymond is, uh, I think he has already shared or is going to share. Um, the sure? session evaluation, yeah, is just uh, the first question on that form. And then uh, if you've only attended this session, feel free to skip all the rest of the questions and then submit. Do, do remember to submit. Um, and then for people who uh, participated in the full workshop or part of the workshop uh, that was around creating a case study for your portfolio, please evaluate uh, the rest of the sessions um, for me so that I can improve for the future. And if you need examples of ways that I've talked about impact, feel free to look at my LinkedIn profile. Um, it's about as updated as it's gonna get for now, but I, my, I myself will be going on the job market later this year. So uh, I will be looking for ways to improve my resume in LinkedIn as well. Yeah, uh, this was a uh, it was a pleasure to have all of you guys with me today. And Sarah, it looks like you have a question or comment. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Can you go back to the um, the instructions for the breakout rooms? Because I'd like to like just do a clip of that because that was sure. really concise in terms of like those three bullet points, add numbers. Like that summary <laughs> is just amazing. Like, um, so. I just wanted to take a quick screenshot of that because that is super helpful in terms of action that I can take. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm glad it was helpful. I, I I normally like for my decks to stand alone, so I'm probably going to jump back in and, and write down some of the things that I was only verbally conveying to everybody. Uh, but if anyone else has uh, suggestions for ways that you've improved lines on your resume and CV, I would love to hear them because I fully believe that I can learn from everybody. So I am here to learn as well. Please tell me your tips um, for improving uh, lines on CVs, impact statements in portfolios. Um, if you see something on my LinkedIn and you think that uh, it could really be better or it's completely unclear to you what I did, I would like to know because like I said, I'm also going on the job market and uh, looking to get better. And were you able to grab the, the free screenshot? I'm not I, sure. Yeah, what I did. Thank you so much, Helen. Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming uh, and taking time on your Saturday morning. Thank you so much for uh, being here, Raymond, hosting the event um, to begin with, and also for starting me on this journey of uh, <laughs> trying to improve my public speaking. That's why I've been doing these series and uh, also just sharing more knowledge that I have managed to accumulate but did not realize uh, with other people. Um, it's, it's surprising, I think, once we sit down and try to give advice, uh, how much we actually do know. And that applies for all of you guys too. So uh, don't let anyone minimize your experiences, um, the knowledge that you've already gathered. Uh, it, it is there you are going to use it. I, I promise you, you just, um, I think you'll see those opportunities come up uh, as you move into new roles, um, new industries, uh, you'll, you'll see ways to apply those, ex those hard earned experiences that you already have. All right, um, any final questions before I let you guys go? I see messages in the chat that I should probably read. 
I think this one is just kind of random, but I really appreciate it how you like when you said looking into the magic ball, like for impact that isn't like because for a lot of UX researchers, our impact is six months down the line, right? Mm -hmm. Or or it's something that we can't like it was part of a huge development process. And so it's not something that can be completely attributed to our single study, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact that you were pointing out, out about news articles, I thought that was really intriguing. And I was wondering about like, if, if you could like, would you suggest people linking news articles that um, reference their specific project or uh, projects or portfolios that they're like working on supporting on in their LinkedIn profile? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, if you if you're able to, I I think that that is a great way to show like uh, just how far reaching potential impact uh, of your work has been. I haven't linked to articles in my LinkedIn profile, but um, I did uh, sort of move the needle when I was at TikTok on a particular thing. We had uh, a study where many participants surfaced that it's difficult to search for things on TikTok. Uh, mm -hmm. This was two years ago. Um, and then around last year, a lot of news articles started coming out saying that Gen Z now uses TikTok as their Google uh, instead of going to Google. That's uh, awesome. They now turn to TikTok to, you know, find how to do things, to find uh, places to travel, or like if you're going to a particular city, what's, you know, what can you do there? Um, and so, even though I was not directly involved in improving their search algorithms and their search tool, uh, I, I think I had one of the first studies saying like, this is something that needs to be fixed like ASAP. Right. Um, so I, I linked to that particular article saying Gen Z now uses uh, TikTok as Google in my portfolio. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I think is a great way to, <clears throat> to show like impact that you've had. Uh, okay. Cool. Thank you. I mean, yeah, pretty much from like a, a mass media standpoint too. Somebody decided that, uh, ooh, look at this, look at, look at what's happening. And then it reaches more people that way as well. Like people who may not have discovered it already. Yeah, sure. great question. Thank you. Any other questions? No, thank you so much. This was great, Helen. This was awesome. Thank you. I want to thank say you the all same for your thing. active participation. <laughs> Helen, thank you for this ambitious series that spanned, you know, over six months, um, helping people make this journey. It's just been awesome that you've been willing to do it. And speaking of impact, how many people's lives have been touched by your willingness? <laughs> In this program. I guess I'll have to think about it and try not to discount it. <laughs> Follow yeah, my own. You'll have to put it on your your resume and your CV and your portfolio for sure. Ultimately, um, it, while it might be a line on a CV, I, I I hope that the effects are like just really far reaching for each of you personally. That uh, it helps you find like that next role that you really want, or just feel more confident about talking about your achievements. Because I know that this group has. Uh, highly motivated, um, highly like ambitious people who have already done a lot and just need uh, to, to show that to the world. So crossing fingers that it has that impact for you. And I'll just feel better like uh, knowing that some, somehow my knowledge has been beneficial to other people. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely, it has. Thank you so, so much. Thank of course. You. Thank Take you care. all. Enjoy the rest of your weekends.